Photography 1, Lecture 9, The Photographic Series. Girl Culture um, is a project that Lauren Greenfield um, devised while she was working as a photojournalist uh, for a variety of publications, um, specifically on um, young women um, in their mid to late teens, primarily. And um, the behavior and activities um, and the interests and troubles that um, um, go along with being a teenager um, became a, a focus for her. As with a lot of uh, photographers, especially photojournalists, um, while they may be sent from one assignment to another um, with very little connection between the stories that they're covering, there are often um, stories that they find so compelling and that they keep uh, finding themselves being drawn back to, and those become series um, as a result. Uh, the book that came out of the work that she did um, on girl culture was published in 2002, um, and she had been working for many years on um, this series um, informally um, over that period of time. And um, as with most photojournalists, she found a way to um, embed herself in the culture and um, uh, would at least, if not befriend um, the girls that she was photographing, um, at least get to the point where they were comfortable enough with her that they would behave um, as they would whether she was there or not. And um, this would involve uh, activities that have to do with school, um, and so there are proms, and um, there's dating, and um, certainly there are lots of boys involved. Um, and the, the thing with the photojournalist is the, the objective is to get to the point where um, the subject is aware that you're there, and at the same time, um, really doesn't care that you're there. They're going to behave the way they do regardless. This is, um, I believe, from a quinceanera party, 15-year-old um, girls um, in a limousine, inexplicably with a mirror in its um, uh, roof, um, on their way to um, whatever the, the venue was that uh, where the quinceanera was being held. But she would also follow them into um, the various things that would happen to them um, uh, emotionally, but also physically, so their health concerns along the way. And um, the attempt is not just to show a certain side of um, girl culture, but um, as many sides as, as she felt were, um, were there to be seen. Um, probably the first great American uh, photography book um, is American Photographs, which was published by Walker Evans in the mid-1930s, mid and which features um, a lot of the architecture which, for which he's very well known. Um, and a, a, a lot of it um, in the uh, rural South, um, there's certainly photographs from New York City and, and other um, large cosmopolitan areas, but um, uh, Evans seems to have been drawn primarily to these um, out-of-the-way places and um, very in idiosyncratic um, architecture and, and buildings. Um, this uh, is one of my favorite Evans's um, with a, a number of uh, things that, that uh, uh, set it apart from your average photograph of a uh, uh, neighborhood store slash um, cafe. This is the uh, front window of a uh, studio, I believe it's in Georgia, and um, with tiny prints of um, a lot of people who had come through to have their portraits taken. Um, Evans is perhaps not as well known these days for his uh, images of people, but um, they were certainly very much on his radar, and um, he was very concerned about um, the plight of, of human beings just uh, making their way through the world in the United States in the mid-30s. Um, in the depths of the Depression in particular. Um, this is uh, an image made in New York. 
of a woman on a uh, um, on a street, and um, but uh, he was also interested in the, the people who lived in um, the rural country. This was made in uh, Alabama. It's of a sharecropper's wife, and um, she looks like she could perhaps be fifty and and. Um, was uh, in fact in her mid twenties when this photograph was made. Um, the the life that these people led was hard, and um, I think Evans captures that brilliantly here. At the same time, she's really a person, um, which is not always that easy to uh, convey in a photograph. In the late nineteen forties, uh, Robert Frank, um, a Swiss photographer, moved to the United States and um, uh, found it a fascinating place. He uh, very quickly started getting um, uh, assignments from a variety of magazines and, and um, other entities. And um, as with uh, Jill Greenfield, um, who would you know, many years later uh, follow her own um, process of, of discovery in, in America, um, with Frank, um, when he wasn't working on assignment, um, uh, he applied for and got uh, a couple of uh, Guggenheim fellowships to um, drive around the country and stop and photograph whatever caught his eye. Um, this is one of the earlier photographs in the series that would become the Americans, um, taken in Hoboken, New Jersey. And um, it in incorporating um, an American flag and um, people who seem estranged and aren't easily identifiable are hallmarks of, uh, of Frank's work. This is a couple who um, have just gotten married, and I believe this is in Reno. It's in Nevada, um, at any rate, at um, a place where people could go and very quickly get married. Um, and he persuaded them to let him take their picture, which is actually unusual for um, the, the pictures that Frank took for the Americans. Most of the time, um, people were either unaware that he was photographing them or not particularly happy with the idea that he was photographing them. In this case, they seem to have been perfectly happy to let him snap away. Um, this is actually Long Beach in um, California, and um, much has been made of the shroud, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, the car cover, which is seen by some to be a shroud and therefore have um, connotations to uh, uh, coffins and funerals and death. And um, I'm not sure that Frank had any of that in mind. Um, and it's just kind of interesting that people find this, um, that kind of uh, thinking um, interesting. Um, I should point out that when Frank um, uh, finally assembled this work. Um, most of the, the photographs were made between 1955 and 1957. Um, when he finally got them assembled and started going to publishers, he couldn't find a publisher in, in the States to handle it and finally had to go to France, uh, where it was finally published in 1959. And when it came out, um, he was absolutely savaged by the press. Um, the work was considered amateurish and um, certainly not at all kind and um, uh, dark, um, subversive, um, you name it. Um, and yet, this is one of the seminal um, bodies of work in photography and um, is now as um, uh, revered and uh, well known as, as anything um, that has been produced in the medium. This is a photograph taken at a, I believe it's a movie premiere in Los Angeles. And um, typical of Frank uh, turning things inside out and the starlet, um, whose name no one recalls, um, is out of focus and the fans in the background um, who have come to see her and the other people in the film um, are the focus of his attention. Lee Friedlander, um, who comes out of the tradition of uh, the work of, of Evans and, um, and Robert Frank. Um, as with um, most of these other photographers, 
um, has worked on a variety of different series. With um, Freelander, though, I mean, his series, many of them gone on, have gone on for, for many decades. Um, he put together this book called Self-Portrait, um, which had grown out of, of what he saw in his own work um, over the oh, 10 or 15 years before it was published in 1970, um, where he saw his own image one way or another cropping up in, um, in various um, images um, in various situations. He would, generally, he would be working on, oh, five, six, seven series at a time and um, because he would just roam around and look for what it was that, that caught his interest and um, only later say, oh, yeah, that fits into this category. This one works with this series. So the self-portraits um, grew out of the other things that he was doing. And um, after a while, he started to find um, situations where he would photograph from chest level, as in this image, um, so that you wouldn't see the camera. And um, with uh, his typical wry and deadpan um, sense of humor, uh, put his face um, behind the, um, the reflection of his face behind the, uh, this trophy. But he would also, um, just set the camera up, um, in this case in a motel room, um, somewhere where he was staying. And um, I don't know whether it was because he was bored or he really thought it would be a, an interesting idea. Um, ended up being a, a great photograph, um, well known. Um, I usually caution people not to try this at home, but um, then again, if you're gonna try it, perhaps it's better that it be done at home. Um, anyway, um, the idea of documenting himself um, as, uh, and I shouldn't say document because he's not a documentarian and never really has been, um, but that um, seeing himself in this situation might be of interest to others. And um, here we see how shadows um, have often played um, a role in his images. And um, this has a number of things going on. I mean, this has uh, perhaps uh, something of a stalker um, uh, uh, feel about it. I mean, I certainly wouldn't refer to uh, Friedlander as a stalker, except uh, one who stalks in, in the pursuit of images. And, um, but always, uh, or most of the time, um, remaining very playful. And, um, but uh, most important to note that he's, he was, in fact, looking for situations like this where he would... Um, uh, be surprised by his shadow or reflection and incorporated in, um, in an image. And um, this is a, not only a self-portrait, but a double self-portrait. Um, not only is his silhouette um, featured in this storefront window, um, this is taken in New Orleans, but also there is a, uh, apparently there was a small mirror um, in the back of the space um, excuse me, inside this building. And the figure in that is also him. Um, and then, of course, you've got this gentleman um, watching what he's doing, probably having no idea and, and uh, um, looking at him very askance. Um, but what we see here is a lot of what's typical of Friedlander's work. Um, it's a storefront um, reflection, uh, a commercial, perhaps industrial um, reflection um, uh, in the window, and a lot of layering. You know, only with the window, you have his reflection, you have the reflection of another man, um, of cars and a building in the background, um, and um, all of this adds up to um, the world that Friedlander sees. William Eggleston was, as I think I've mentioned, um, previously, uh, the first photographer who worked um, primarily in color, um, actually solely in color, to have a um, show of uh, a one-person show of his work at the Museum of Modern Art in 1973, and um, the book, the uh, catalog that was published by the museum in conjunction with the show, was called William Eggleston's Guide. Um, the notion being that um, because Virtually all of the photographs were taken um, in the rural south um, where uh, Eggleston was born and raised and has lived virtually his entire life. Um, 
and that this is his take on that world, which is certainly very idiosyncratic. Um, Eggleston has a very unique and specific style, and um, it's rare that you see an Eggleston and you don't recognize it immediately. And yet, um, there's a huge variety to the images. The notion, though, that um, this was somehow documentation of the South um, would be an oversimplification, I think. This is really much more um, about Eggleston's take on his immediate environment. And very often, friends and acquaintances um, are the people who are in the shots. And um, his point of view, though, is often, um, as I mentioned before, very idiosyncratic. Here we have a, a woman walking along the side of the road, um, which is at, certainly at the time that this was taken in the late 60s, um, a very common occurrence. And perhaps just as common, um, running into someone and, and finding yourself in, in his bedroom with a, holding a gun. Um, uh, Eggleston uh, has always, he's a raconteur, um, meets people in bars and strikes up conversations and gets to know them and um, finds himself in situations like this and has the presence of mind to, to uh, photograph whoever he's with. I don't know what the, the backstory is and, and perhaps it's not important except that this is I think, um, an emotionally really loaded image. Um, the Ballad of Sexual Dependency um, is a series that Nan Golden um, uh, has been working on for decades. Um, her primary subject matter is herself and her friends and acquaintances, and um, the relationships that they get into and that she has gotten into um, that have not always been um, in their best interests. And um, uh, so she has documented, and I use that, again, I use that word advisedly, but um, she has always been very interested in letting people in on the world that she inhabits, she and her friends inhabit, and friends, lovers, um, and others. And so we see these people in various situations. Um, very often, um, there's a feeling of, even though there are lots of people around, very often they seem alienated and uh, disconnected from one another, um, either shut down or um, uh, explosively angry at times. And um, there's a fair amount of brutality in her work, at least not in the work itself, but it documents um, people who've been brutalized in one way or another people who are on the, um, the outside um, sort of fringes of society at various times. Um, uh, people whose gender is not necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily conform to um, the average, um, but these are people that she, um, uh, that inhabit her world and that she has uh, made images of. And here we see some of the evidence of the, uh, the brutality um, and um, the, you can go back to the title, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency, um, if you have any doubt about um, her, her point of view. Um, and I've talked about Alex Soth, who is a um, photojournalist and also a fine art photographer, um, who is one of the members of the Magnum um, photography agency, which was begun in the, the late 1940s by um, Henri Cartier-Bresson and Robert Capa and a number of other um, very well-known photojournalists at that time. Um, it is still a thriving agency, and um, Soth is one of their, um, their stars, along with um, Martin Parr, who is also a, a very well-known um, photojournalist, but also fine art photographer. Um, Soth had been sent to uh, Columbia um, to cover um, a story. And um, while there, he was uh, struck by these um, uh, seemingly wild dogs um, who roam uh, the city, um, apparently um, unconnected to anyone in particular, 
Um, they just find a way to make their way through the, the world um, on their own. And um, as with any uh, other good journalist, um, Soth is particularly adept at putting um, people and, as it turns out, animals at ease in his presence, and um, ha they have allowed him to photograph them. Um, this is a particularly um, affecting image of, of a dog on a hillside um, with part of the city in the background, the city of Bogota. And um, this is another image of a dog, and uh, a, I'm not exactly clear what the, uh, um, the surroundings are, but it appears to be a ruins of some sort. On the other hand, it may be an abandoned zoo. It's just hard to tell, and not perhaps all that important, um, except that it's obviously an abandoned place, and, and um, here we have a dog in the middle of it. And um, although it's called Dog Days, and a lot of the images are of dogs, they're not exclusively of dogs. So along with the dogs, we have this um, image of a mannequin set up um, what appears to just be a sidewalk, um, wearing a rather peculiar outfit um, with a, uh, a mask over its face. Um, there's a lot going on here, and it's totally open to in interpretation, um, except to say that it's Colombia um, in the last 10 years or so. Again, not relegated simply to um, dogs, but um, other kinds of animals. Here, a chicken on a chair in the middle of an overgrown field. And um, in the background, the mountains. So we get some sense of the landscape at the same time that we see some of the animal life. And um, this is a, a portrait of a, a young girl, um, clearly, and um, holding a, um, a black doll um, with uh, the mountains in the background. Um, and um, I think this is a very touching and poignant um, portrait. Um, the girl seems very self-possessed, and um, at the same time um, that Soth is photographing her, he seems very respectful of her um, as a, a person. And this, so I, I think of this as, as being a, a particularly nice portrait. 